Hello and welcome to day 15 of 30 GIMP tutorials. Today, we are going to do something different. Instead of editing a photo, you are going to transform an ordinary photo into a watercolor painting. It's going to be so much fun. I just can't hide it. So let's get started. If you would like to follow along with the same image that I'm using, you can find a link to it in the description below as well as another file that I'm going to use for the canvas texture as well as some brushes and how to install those brushes. So check out those resources in the description below and we'll go ahead and get started here. So the image that I downloaded was sized at around 1900 pixels wide. I want to make it smaller so I'm going to go up to image and select scale image. Make sure you have the width and the height linked together. That way when you update one, it will automatically update the other to keep the same aspect ratio. To link them, make sure your icon looks like this. If it looks like that, just click here to link them. I'm going to adjust the height to 1800 pixels wide. And when I click my tab key, it will automatically update the width to 1200. Let's go ahead and apply our watercolor effect by coming up to filters. Go down to artistic and select water pixels and this is going to automatically adjust the pixels in the image so it looks more like a watercolor painting now with the default settings here we can see some details in the image still so i can tell that these are leaves still only because i knew they were there originally so if you want to bring back more detail or reduce the amount of details, you can adjust the super pixels size to do that. So smaller will bring back more details and make them more apparent. Larger is going to create a more brush stroke type of effect and those details are going to be reduced more and more depending on the size that you place for the super pixels size. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back down to the default, which I believe was around 32. So I'm gonna use that setting as well as all the other default settings. You can go ahead and experiment with this with your own images. The next thing we need to do is increase the size of our canvas. So let's go up to image again and select canvas size. Make sure this time they are not linked together because what I wanna do is create a square canvas at 2400 pixels wide by 2400 for the height and I want to make sure my image is in the center of the canvas which we can easily do by clicking on the center button. Go ahead and resize and now we need to increase the size of our layer boundary because if we don't our brush strokes will be confined inside of this layer boundary which are those yellow and black dashed lines. So we need to increase the layer boundary to match our canvas size so we have the freedom to use our watercolor brushes throughout the entire layer. So we're gonna go up to layer and select layer to image size and that increases it. But the only problem is it included a solid white color around the outside of the image and that's going to restrict the effect we get with our brushes. So I wanna fill this in with transparency instead. So we're going to undo that with command or control plus the letter Z. And then we need to come over here to our layer panel, right click on it and select add alpha channel, which is going to apply a level of transparency for that layer. We don't see anything, but when we go up to layer and select layer to image size again, we can see that it's now filled in with transparency versus a solid color. All right, so the fun begins now. We're gonna start painting with our watercolor brushes. So grab your paint tool with the letter P. Make sure your foreground color is set to black because we are going to use a layer mask to create this effect. So let's create one right now. Click right here and select white for your layer mask type. Click add and that adds the layer mask. And now when you paint with black, it will begin applying that watercolor brush shape and opacity for that brush. I'm gonna undo that with Command or Control plus the letter Z. So make sure you're in your brushes panel here and locate your watercolor brushes and select one. And I wanna start off with a brush that has more of a hard edge like this one because I wanna minimize 
the edge of the image as it is right now and tone it down. Now, if you're not seeing your brushes panel, go up to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and select Brushes from here. I'm gonna go ahead and make my brush size a little bit smaller for this one. And then I'm just going to click and paint along the edge right here. And that's going to start removing that hard edge and making it softer. So I'm not too worried about how it looks right now because we are going to apply numerous brush strokes along the edges here and it's going to remove the symmetry of this brush right now and it's going to look a lot more random once I show you the secret key for creating a random brush stroke. So again I'm just going to paint along the bottom here and it's lowering the opacity around the edge and not removing it completely and that's based on the type of brush that I have. The creator added some transparency in the brush so it's not going to remove it completely and it gives it that texture of a watercolor brush stroke which gives it the realism of creating that type of effect. And I'm just applying one main stroke across the top here. I'm not clicking and repainting. I'm just pushing the brush over here to the right. All right, now that we've cleaned that up and it's a lot softer, we're going to begin adding some random brush strokes with the help of GIMP. First, I wanna find a different brush. So maybe something like this one here. And then in the tool options, we're gonna scroll down here to the bottom. You're gonna click right here where it says dynamics and you're going to select confetti. Now watch what happens when I begin hovering my mouse over the canvas. Look how my brush is randomly changing sizes and angles. That's the key for creating a random brush stroke. So every time you move your mouse, it's going to change the angle and the size of the brush. And that creates a more realistic type of brush stroke so that you're not going in and trying to come over here and manually change the angle and the size. So the next thing you may want to consider doing is applying jitter, which is going to increase the scattering of your brush stroke. So what do I mean by that? Well, the higher the amount, the more that brush stroke is going to be scattered throughout the canvas. So if I click right here and begin painting, it's going to apply it outside of that area where I'm applying the brush. So I'm going to click and hold down my mouse button and paint and you can see it's starting to scatter around the image even though I'm painting right in the middle. Okay, I'm going to undo that and the lower the amount of course, the tighter those brush strokes are going to be. So I'm going to bring this in just a little bit to about 0.5. Now when I begin painting along the edge, I'm holding down my mouse button, it's applying that brush based on the different dynamics of it and changing the angle and the size as I go around it. How cool is that? I love it. It's pretty awesome if you ask me. So we're going to continue doing this with multiple brush shapes so we can create a more random type of watercolor effect so it's not all the same type of brush. We have different types of brush sizes when you're doing this in real life. So you may have a smaller brush for fine detail and a larger brush for less detail. And then the amount of pressure you put on it is going to change and the opacity of that one color may be different from another. So having this dynamic setting turned on is going to help create that randomness and create a more realistic type of watercolor effect. So I'm going to come in here with this brush next and I'm just going to paint a couple times along the edges here just to break it up a little bit more. And if you want to, you can always come back into your tool options and then turn these off. Just scroll down and find dynamics off. And then if you wanted to, you can adjust your angle and your brush size according to your creative vision just to add in a couple brush strokes like this just to break it up a little bit more. This brush has more of a splatter type of effect to it. So I'm just going to go along the edges and the corners here to make sure that that hard edge is completely gone because we shouldn't have any kind of an edge like that. Otherwise, it's not going to look natural or realistic. So that's looking pretty good. The next thing I want to do is I want to add 
my canvas texture now. So go ahead and locate that file that you downloaded, add it to your canvas by dragging it over the canvas and it will be added as a new layer. We're gonna click and drag this below. All right, so our watercolor effect is coming to life now. I just have a couple more quick tips for you to add to the realism. I wanna go ahead and tone down the colors now and add a blue color tint over the image. So we're gonna start off by creating a new layer here called color. Make sure it's filled with transparency and click OK. For my brush type, I'm going to change that back to a round brush with a soft edge. And then I'm going to select a new blue color here. I'm gonna choose a color from the image itself with my eyedropper tool. So this color here looks pretty good. And then I'm just going to paint over the image like this. And we are applying this on a new layer, so we're not ruining the original watercolor image there. Now we wanna come up to mode and change it to soft light to blend it in with that layer below. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the opacity down as well because that's a little bit too intense at that level, maybe a little bit more, so right about there. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna select my canvas texture here and create another layer again. And I'm gonna call this color two. And I wanna paint a blue color on the background here just to add to the watercolor effect. This time I'm gonna go back to a watercolor brush again. So maybe this one here, and I'm gonna come in here and turn on dynamics again. I'm gonna choose confetti and jitter. I don't need that, but I do need a new color. So I'm gonna select a darker color this time. So maybe something like that. And then I'm gonna begin painting around the edge of the image like so. And of course you can do this as much or as little as you like based on what you prefer and your creative vision. So the more you go over an area, the darker that area is going to become. So I just want it a little bit darker on the edges and then maybe a little bit more on the outside real quick. So something like that. It is too intense, so we do need to drop the opacity down a little bit to right around 50. All right, now that you know how to create a watercolor effect in GIMP, check out that playlist there to your left to learn more about retouching, editing, and styling your images in GIMP. Thanks for listening and have an awesome day.